everyone, thanks for joining us again. Today we'll be talking about the Underground Railroad as it specifically applied to Racine County. Racine County was a very uh, important area as far as the, the Underground Railroad goes, um, and Carrie is going to kick us off by telling us why that is. So even from the very beginning in 1843, um, some of our founding fathers wanted to form a Liberty Party. And so I have a document here that just sort of outlines uh, some of the resolutions that were created at one of the very first meetings of the Liberty Party. This is dated September 6, 1843. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but we particularly liked the second resolution uh, it said, resolve second that the cringing, crawling, psychopathic feeling manifested by both political towards the aristocracy of landholders leaves us no reasonable hope that an equitable and just course of policy will be pursued by either in administering state or national governments. So early on, they wanted to just make it very clear that they were against slavery and they wanted to set up a, a political party um, in, in opposition to that. Mm -hmm. And going off of that shortly later, in 1844, uh, Wisconsin's first uh, anti-slavery association was formed. It was the Burlington Liberty Association. So you can tell that all of these people are really starting to band together and form these uh, very uh, impassioned beliefs against slavery. Then in 1845, the memorial document to Congress was drafted and that document stated that the residents of the Wisconsin Territory wanted to make sure that Wisconsin stayed a free state, that it would not become a slavery territory. And so early on, we had a foundation set for uh, this area being an abolitionist area. Um, and so the next thing I wanna talk about is the geographical features that made it uh, a place where um, it was a good uh, fit for uh, freedom seeking. Um, just even the land itself, the Lake Michigan and the river uh, made it possible for ships to be coming and going. Um, one of the big crops in this area was wheat and so a lot of ships were coming and going out of the harbor. The fact that we are located between major cities such as Milwaukee, Green Bay, and Chicago uh, brought a lot of traffic through the area and so that uh, helped a lot more uh, people able to come through this area and make their way to freedom in Canada. Um, and so speaking of wheat and the harbor, one of the first abolitionists that we hear of when we talk about the Underground Railroad was A.P. Dutton. He was a director for 13 different shipping lines that brought wheat in and out of the harbor here in Racine. And he was an open abolitionist. He did not even try to hide the fact that he was against slavery and that he was helping people to get to freedom in Canada. Um, he knew which ship captains he could trust to put people on their boats, and get people safely to Canada. And so he wrote later that he believes at least 100 people were helped to freedom through the Racine Harbor. Uh, additionally, next we have Dr. Edward Dyer. Um, he was known as the Underground Railroad's commander in chief of the area. Uh, there's a lot of writings on Dr. Dyer, but one of our favorites is a story that his daughter once told where she uh, happened upon a freedom seeker uh, hiding in their act attic that her father had hid there um, until he could then transport him to um, the harbor to be taken safely to freedom. Additionally, we have Henry Durand. Um, he also worked on worked with the Underground Railroad hiding freedom seekers in his basement. You might recognize his last name uh, as Durand Avenue, a very major uh, road here in Racine. Um, so again, all these big names, very uh, essential to our base history. And then another um, abolitionist that we uh, often talk about is Colonel William Utley. He was the commander of the 23rd uh, Wisconsin Abolitionist Regiment. He was known to be a staunch abolitionist, um, and when they were fighting in the Civil War, if his troops would come across a escaping uh, freedom seeker, they would always help them, and to the point where he was almost court-martialed. Um, because at this point, um, you know, the Fugitive Slave Act, which we're gonna talk about in another video, was in effect, and so it was against federal law to help 
freedom seekers, but he went ahead and do, did it. He encouraged his men to do so. And um, there is a story of him helping a, uh, a former slave of a Kentucky judge and getting in trouble for that, and he refused to comply. So um, he's definitely one of my favorite abolitionists. There are hundreds of Racine abolitionists um, in our documentation. We would never have time to uh, tell all of their stories. And you know, the fact is we have three pages of names of people that were known abolitionists, but that doesn't even tell us the whole story. There are probably many, many others that helped the cause and haven't been named. So um, definitely a lot of people involved in this movement. So the next thing we wanna talk about is where. What were some of the uh, Underground Railroad sites in Racine County? Um, one of the most notable sites is the First Presbyterian Church, which is just a block away from our museum here. The First Presbyterian Church was known to be a anti-slavery church, so much so that um, part of their charter was that if you had ever owned slaves in the past, you were not able to be a member. Um, and so many of the men who were part of the Liberty Party were also part of the First Presbyterian Church. Um, we do have here in the museum artifacts from the crawl space in the First Presbyterian Church that were found in the 70s um, and are believed to be left behind uh, by a freedom seeker. And so again, you know, we talked last time about why there are not a lot of artifacts or documentation. Um, it's because this was a secret, illegal, um, dangerous operation that was happening. So it's pretty amazing that we do have artifacts, but those were found uh, in the church basement and have, you know, been gone on to verify that, that this was an Underground Railroad site. Mm -hmm. um, another Underground Railroad site that we know of is A.P. Dutton's warehouse, as Carrie told you. A.P. Dutton was a very prominent figure in the abolitionist movement, and he would hide freedom seekers in the, his warehouse that was situated right on the harbor so that he could safely uh, hide them there and then quickly and easily get them onto a ship that would take them upward to Canada. Another uh, site that um, has actually been moved, so there's a home on Lathrop Avenue, it's on the corner of Lathrop and Washington Avenue at 1128 Lathrop Avenue. That home was actually moved in the 1860s, but prior to that, it was on the Rock River Plank Road, and it was, part of that home was the Toll House. And the man who lived there, Alfred Payne, who was the toll keeper, um, he was known to have helped people through the, the tollway that were trying to escape to freedom. And the most famous name uh, was Joshua Glover, which we'll talk about him in another video. But um, that was uh, also a known place that people could go and have somebody sympathetic to the cause. Additionally, we have the Dyer House, uh, which is located in Burlington. Um, Carrie's got some information on Liberty Street. Yeah, um, Dr. Dyer actually called the road in front of his house Liberty Street. He was, uh, you know, as we said, uh, the Underground Railroad Commander in Chief, very openly uh, against slavery, and so didn't try to hide the fact that um, he was trying to help people. And so he called that road Liberty Street. Today, it's known as State Street. Um, and we also know of the Ela House. Ela House. Ayla? Ayla yes. House, sorry, my bad. Uh, the Ayla House, which uh, is in Rochester, we know that it's still standing. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of information on Mr. Ayla because, again, very secretive movement. Um, so there's not a whole lot of information on him, but we do know that he was one of the uh, Underground Railroad uh, operators in the area. So thank you. Um, we, uh, next time we'll be talking about the Fugitive Slave Act and its prominent role, and Wisconsin's prominent role in defying it, um, and especially in Racine County. Um, and then in another future video, we'll be talking about Joshua Glover, which is a really um, amazing story of a freedom seeker escaping through Racine County. So thanks for joining us. Thanks. And have a good day. Bye.